we're back for the December Shout 2020. So I'd like to invite each of us as we get ready for Jeff to channel, for each of us to take that good, deep breath, the conscious breath, the breath of life. Surely we all breathe all the time, but the breath is something we often take for granted. This conscious breath is a breath of presence, really allowing yourself to feel. Feel the energies flow as you breathe. Breathe and feel, expanding with each breath. Expand within and expand out. Take the good deep breath and breathe. The I am here, I exist. It's a good, deep breath of life. Really feel it, allow for it. It's a gift you give yourself, each of us. So take the good, deep breath and feel into the energies of Adamus. He's here for each and every one of us with each and every breath. So feel it within you, within the heart of you, as we breathe and invite Adamus. So stay with the breath. Stay with inviting Adamus in. He's here for each of us. I am that I am. Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Welcome to Shoud three of the Merlin I Am series, live here from this beautiful place, Kona, Hawaii, a place where I came to in my eh, kind of lifetime. It was a different kind of lifetime, but in my expression as Mark Twain, Samuel Clements. As I've told some of the groups who have been here before, I, I walked by on this very road that they call Mama Lahoa Highway. Try saying that three times when you've had a couple of drinks. But I walked by as Samuel Clements, Mark Twain. I, I actually looked up here at the property, not knowing that one day it would be this amazing blessing of Villa Amio, a place for Chambra from all around the world to gather. I know you can't see it now, but imagine for a moment through my eyes and Calder's eyes as I look out the ocean beautiful foliage, the gentleness in the air. Oh, what a place for Chambra. And even if you never come here, even if you're never here in person, what a place to feel into the energy of all that we've done as Chambra. What a blessing. What a, what a beautiful place. And it's filled also with the energies of Belle, our Chambra dog. Ours, I say, wherever Belle happens to be. She'll be jingling around today throughout the our shout. Let's start with a deep breath for abundance. Ah, uh, there's that dear girl. Uh, let's start with a let's start with a deep breath of abundance. Abundance, because it's natural. Nothing you work for, nothing a banker can give you, nothing your boss can give you. Abundance is natural. Let's start with that deep breath, Linda. Deep breath of abundance. You're you're abundant in your life, but. You can always breathe in more. You can always breathe in more abundance. Well, don't blow it out so fast. No, to savor it. Oh, take, oh, can take hold my breath. Watch this. Okay. You know, like that. Try it once. Just I'm not quite just as big as savor you. it. Savor it. Uh, go ahead and try. A little tense there, a little tense. I normally I'm performing. <laughs> normally I'd have the audience to play with, but now I have to only, I have only Linda to pick on, such as COVID. Okay. Let, let's all do that together. Let's let's take that big deep breath and, and, and realizing that Calder has these smoke filled lungs, but even he and me can take that deep breath together of abundance. And then savor it. Feel it expand inside your being. Don't don't just blow it out right away. Go ahead. A deep breath of abundance. And then, uh, 
good. And now, now how about a great big death or <laughs> death? Woo! Well, I'm, I'm thinking of death because our special guest today is dear Linda Farrell. Uh, Linda was such an uh, important part of the Shouds for so many years in Colorado. Uh, she's our special guest today, so I guess it's on my... Well, you know, I, I have to admit right up front in this Shout, I'm trying to put it on my mind, which is hard to do. In other words, I'm trying to think so that for later on in our discussion, I can relate to that thing that all of you do, think. So I'm trying to think right now, and it's messing me up, so I'm just going to stop thinking and not worry about it. How about that great big breath, a great big breath for your free energy body? And feel it in your body. Feel it. Ah. Now how about one for abundance and the free energy body? Ah, for both. Abundance. That's something that's very, very natural because it's your energy, period. Uh, we've talked about these physics. Now we're going to start applying them. You're going to start applying them. No more, no more excuses. No more excuses at all. You breathe abundance in. It's all your energy. You take a deep breath and you breathe in your free energy body. You breathe in your energy without fear. Go ahead. Breathe in all of your energy without fear. Yeah, it looks a little constipated, but let's do it again. Let's like, like, no, no. I, d I do it better in the swimming pool. That, okay, well, we'll go up to the swimming pool. Can you bring the cameras up there? We'll, we'll just do it's Linda breathing in the swimming yeah, pool. Yeah, yeah, that works okay. easier for now, me. Now, this is a, a promise. We'll, we'll get video. No, we won't. Of Linda no, breathing won't. in the no, swimming pool. No, Calder, you have to figure it out. We will not do that. Yeah, and we'll show it at the next shout. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> It should be natural. Your breath. Your breath is an indicator of, of really how you're letting the energy flow into your body. And I'm not saying it's the only thing, but if your breath is choppy like, like this, it shows that you're, you're just holding back, you're limiting. And if you're blowing it out right away, like that, it just means you're not savoring, you're not letting it sink in. So how about a good deep breath of your energy. Go ahead, for all Chambra. For all of Chambra? Well, no, as an example. Oh, oh, as oh, a standard oh, okay. to all of Chambra. Much better. Still a little, uh, still uh, a little tense. A little allergy thing. A little allergy, no excuse. <gasps> there are no excuses. Allergies, bad jobs, I don't care, you know, bad families, I don't care what it is. No excuses. You take a deep breath. It's all yours. You savor it. You feel it rushing through your body, rushing through what uh, used to be your mind, rushing through your entire being. You know, all energy is yours. You know that, don't you? Of course. Mentally. Of course yes. I know that. Yes, but then applying it into your life, letting it into your life, it's a different thing because there's a, there's a pattern of holding back. There's a pattern of believing that it's somebody else's, something else's. So there's a pattern of really limiting it, but we're going to blow it open right now. There's no excuses. There's no not doing it. There's no waiting for tomorrow. We're going to do it right now. Take a good deep breath, damn it, and let the energies, your energies, into your being. That's it. That's it. It's that easy. No, no excuses. No, I'm really tired today, or Does I'm it tired. Have to be just a nose breath, or could it, would the breath come in from your nose and your mouth? Well, it can be anything you want. I prefer the nose breath, yeah, but it can be anything you want. You can breathe in through your mouth. Go ahead. Ah, now the relaxed breath. Relaxed breath. Yeah, let me come around from behind oh, and, no. and help you with the oh, the no. breathing. Okay. Now just relax. You're representing all Chambra here with their issues of <coughs> holding back. Not, you know, you've heard me talk about all energy is yours for so very long now, but, but then you think about it, but you don't do it. Now we're going to do it. So let's, let's breathe together on three. One, 
two, three. I'm a little shorter. Ah, didn't that feel good? Mostly. Mostly. Does, does the chest hurt? You don't mind if I do that, do you? Your husband does, so I can do it. Um, <laughs> cheap thrills for Ascended Masters. Uh, okay, let's take another deep Calder. Uh, he, he's not happy with me, but that's okay. Let's take a good deep breath together. Ah, and relax. Breathe in your abundance. Go ahead, breathe in your energy, your abundance. Breathe in your beauty. Breathe in all that you are. Breathe in every experience that you've had. There's sometimes this resistance to – well, the breath is a good indicator of how you're letting energy in. Are you breathing freely and openly? Or are you making excuses? Or are you just limiting the breath so you have barely enough oxygen coming in? You take a good deep breath, a fulfilled breath of your energy, of your abundance, of your free energy body. And yeah, it's, it's a little tough at first, you know, because there, there is a natural built-in resistance to doing it. And, and most people don't take that good deep breath of their energy. Well, it's one thing to do a lot of breathing exercises, but you know, if you still believe that, that it's an outside energy, and it does a little good, but when you breathe in yourself, breathe in all of you, the human, the I am, the master, you breathe in all of you, what you're really doing is arousing your senses. You're arousing your senses in your sensuality. You're opening up, you're letting it in finally. You know, there's a big resistance because of stuff that happened in your life. So everybody, every human on the planet right now has limited themselves in some way or the other. We're going to go beyond that. And really, right now there's no choice. I'm not, I'm not saying you could do it or not do it. There's no choice if you're going to stay with this party, because it's all about you, all about your abundance, your energy, your creativity, your joy, your body. I know a lot of Shambhara are doing body complaints these days. Oh, my body hurts. Well, sure, because you're, you're not allowing right now. You're resisting. You have a body issue. You are resisting. And then the last thing you really want to do is you take a deep breath because then your body hurts a little bit more. Wherever it happens to be, your knee, your heart, your hips, or your arm, your head, or whatever. So there's a resistance. You actually literally slow, lessen the volume of breath because it hurts. It hurts to be alive. So you're living in that kind of zone of pain, not really wanting to live full out because you think it's going to be more painful, but a funny thing happens. When you get clear with yourself and you say, I am that I am, this is my energy, this is my abundance, my free energy body, and you take a deep, bold breath. You just breathe it in, fill your lungs up to the point where it feels like they're going to burst. You breathe it in, and then you savor it. You know, it's like you'd put a piece of uh, uh, pie in your mouth and you just mush it around in there for a while before you swallow it. Uh, Calder's example, not mine. You mush <laughs> it around in there before you swallow it. You savor it, and then you digest it, and you feel every bit of that pie going down your from your pie hole, down your throat, into your belly, into your beingness, serving you. That's what it's like. Let's take a deep breath together. You, me, and all of Shambhara. Are you about ready? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Well, no, no, sir, me. Uh, let's take a good deep breath. Everybody out there in Shambhara land, breathing in all of you, all that you are. You're not breathing in mass consciousness here. No, no, no. You're not breathing in the person next to you. You're not breathing in COVID. You're not bringing in, you're breathing in you. Let's take that good deep breath. Savor. And then digest. You're not really blowing it out. You're digesting it. You're 
opening your pathways to your own energy. Uh, so thank you, dear Linda, for cooperating. How does that feel? How do you feel? Better? A little heady? Actually, it feels better. And once you do it, you kind of can't forget it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do it again? In bed. No. Do it again. Don't get, don't get like that. You know, Calder is not going to like this flirtatious attitude of yours. He's not going to like... It's a menage a trois. You're in bed with us every night. What are no, you talking no, about? No, 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 I oh, not, yeah. no, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. No, no. Yeah, trust no, me. I know, I know when you're there. Go ahead. Let's okay. not reveal <clears throat> secrets here. <clears throat> Let's take a deep breath together again. Once again, breathing in all of you. I, I just like the, the word abundance because that's what you are. You're abundance. Let's take a deep breath. Savor and then digest it. Don't blow it out. Digest it. Bring it into your being. There we go. Good. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of resistance that I felt uh, in Chamberland. A lot of resistance. It's, it's natural. Don't worry about it. Because it, it, it's like opening yourself up and you're not really sure if you're ready to open. But you are. Basically, you have to. You got this far. You have to. So uh, there's no more ifs, ands, and buts, no more sitting on the fence, no more whining or complaining. We went through all, the, all that. Now it's getting down to living as an abundant master, a happy master on this planet. So next, thank you, next on the list of things I want to cover today before we get into the actual topic. Uh, yes, uh, a lot of Shumber, you've been leaving. Stop that. Stop that. You don't have to. We've had a, a series of them, the memorable ones for most of you because you know them from online. Uh, we had Doxy, we had Edith, we had Sart, and now we have Linda Farrell. Uh, they're fine. They're, they're, they're more than fine. Uh, and, and I can't say they have a lot of regrets, but they do miss being a part of all of this while still in human form. Linda was sick for a long time, not this Linda, uh, but Linda Farrell was ill for a long time. I'm going to tell you something that it may not go over so well for some of you, but don't cluck at me while I'm talking <laughs> to your Linda Isis over there. Yeah. I just went. Yeah. Um, so where was I? Uh, so here it is. Uh, Linda Farrell, here's my special guest today, uh, crossed over one week ago. She fought her illness for a long time. She fought her illness for a long time. No, no more of that. You don't fight the illnesses. And uh, Calder is telling me that on your television commercials, it's, you know, fight cancer, fight this, fight COVID, fight whatever. No, no, you don't do that. That sounds ludicrous. When the energy is yours, what are you fighting? Well, you're only going to be fighting yourself. And what fighting yourself is going to do is make you even more sick. It's going to confirm your state of imbalance and disease. So you're only fighting yourself. No, you breathe it in. Yes, your illness, your craziness, whatever it happens to be, your, your lack of abundance, you breathe that in. And I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying um, that you should say that's your state, but no more fighting these things. It's all just your energy. Your, your disease is your energy. Your lack of abundance is your energy. Your lack of self-worth, it's still your energy. You start breathing in your energy. No resistance, no holding back. You're sick. Uh, you've got an illness. Stop trying to... I want to swear today. Is that okay? Who's uh, going to oh, stop you? Uh, yeah, that's right. Nobody. Uh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Stop trying to figure out your illness, justify it or unjustify it. Stop trying to use mental pressure to get rid of it. Stop all of that. Breathe yourself in. If you're sick, if you're lacking or anything else, breathe yourself in. If you're wondering, oh, why hasn't realization come to me and all these other Schomburg have it and I don't have it, breathe in your energy. Even if that includes your imbalance, your sickness, or anything else, it's still your energy. Breathe it in. Bring it to you. Stop the fight of all things within yourself. Just stop it. And it's not the first time I've had to say this, but I'm, you know, I'm getting a little tired of having to say it over and over and over again. 
but stop, I'll keep saying it if I have to, stop fighting it, whatever it is. It's, the, it's really the ultimate allowing when you're no longer fighting it. You recognize, OMG, this is just my energy. What was I fighting? Why did I spend countless hours? Why did I, why did I rack my brains at night? Why did I lay in bed in fear? Why did I avoid doing anything within my human experience during my daylight waking hours because I'm trying to figure out why I'm in this state, why I have a disease, why I've got uh, m- even mental issues. You know, uh, you got mental issues, you want to keep those mental issues going, you keep fighting them. You keep trying to figure out how to overcome them. That'll keep the mental issues and imbalances in your life for a long time. We end all of that. I don't want to see any of you fighting your issues. I don't want to see any of you saying, oh, why did this happen in my life? Why did I just, uh, as a recent good slash bad example, somebody I love dearly, why did I just get an IRS tax notice? Stop that. All it does is entangle you more in an imbalance that is really not you, doesn't look very good on you. You take a deep breath, you breathe in that IRS tax notice. I know it's the last thing in the world you want to do. Geez, I'm going to get IRS, I'm going to get tax authorities in my body. No, it's all your energy. You breathe it in. You recognize that every energy is there to serve you, even if the human thinks, and that's the operative word here, thinks it's bad. Because a human doesn't I'll go as far as humans say they don't really understand what the fuck's going on right now. Uh, in, a, in so many ways, I mean the old human self that you're slowly releasing, they just don't get it. So you tell the human, you tell that part of you, that, that aspect that's still lingering around, shut up. I'm going to breathe in. This is all mine. Tax notice. Uh, 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 mortgage foreclosure. Yes, all those things. Oh, no, no, Adamas, I can't handle that. Yes, you can. And once you realize that it's all your energy, even what you would judge as being a really bad thing happening to you, and a lot of you get into this whole self-worth, oh, I must have done something wrong, or I'm not listening to Adamas, or Adamas is full of bullshit, or any of the rest of that, Stop that. This is all so simple. It's your energy. You breathe it in. Let's do that again. Take a good deep breath. No matter what it is. I see I tax issues in there. I got health issues in there. <clears throat> I got I got relationship issues, family issues. It's all in there. I'm gonna breathe it in more. Because it's just my energy and I'm going to savor it and I'm going to let that energy now serve me as a master and I'm going to digest that energy. I'm not just going to spit it out as soon as I breathe it in. That's how you live as a master, with everything. And I know, I know, you're all telling me, oh, Thomas, you don't understand. Did I ever tell you my story of the crystal? 100,000 years, give or take. Uh, yeah, I do understand. That, I, I understand what this is like, but I also understand you can get trapped in it. With all the excuses and all the thinking and everything else, I do understand. What you don't understand is so simple. It's just your energy. Let it serve you. And yeah, at first when you open up to it, it can seem like uh, like you're going down a river, a swift river, and you finally hit the rapids and you wonder if you're going to survive. You know what? That's just a... uh, an old human concept. It's just that you're going through some changes and you end up in a beautiful kind of a lagoon with waterfalls and a tropical setting and little fairy elves serving you drinks and a sand beach with nobody else around and beautiful music playing. That's that's what happens after you get through the rapids. So let's take another good deep breath, savor it, and then digest it. Everything, not not a few things, every I'm digesting everything, not just a few things. Everything, 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 everything that's in your life. I don't care what it is, if you like it or not, put it all in the same bin. Breathe it in. It's your energy. And stop thinking so much. Stop thinking. 
so much. Okay, good. And by the way, um, this isn't just me saying this. This is the Chambre who departed, particularly this year. They get to the other side and they realize, oh my gosh, I, I really just gave credence and fed these old issues, got wrapped up in the mind about them. Uh, Linda Farrell saying that right now, she's nodding her head, saying, you know, I thought too much about my body issues. Uh, and yeah, okay, I'm hanging on a second, so I'm, she's giving a little talk over here. She's saying that she never liked her body. Big deal. A big deal. I mean, she said, oh, but you know, I, I would, my body was always the, the negative thing in my life. I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like myself compared to others. You know, it was always, you know, a big body issue uh, causing me to lot, lose a lot of self-worth. Big deal. I mean, get over it. I mean, get over it and get into your free energy body now. Get over that ancestral body. I'm sorry, Linda, about your ancestors having whatever body issues they had. But then you say, hey, no more. Get over it. I'm on my own way now, my free energy body. But Linda's also saying, is not this Linda, uh, but wait, Lin wait, wait. Linda Let, Farrell. Let's bring Linda here. Oh, we'll bring Linda Farrell here. Good. Um, see, now she doesn't have a body. She doesn't have any issues anymore. But then she's not here enjoying the sensual life with the rest of you. So she's saying, yes, I thought about it and I tried fighting it for years and years and years. That was my M.O., method of operation. I tried fighting, whether it was a mental issue or a body issue or a relationship issue or anything else. All that fight for naught, she sang. All that fight for nothing. You don't have to do that. You don't have to fight a thing. And Linda is concurring, saying it was all useless. I realize now it was all my energy. Drink it in, breathe it in, live it in. It's all mine. I don't have to worry that if I do that, the cancer is over going to take my body. I don't have to worry about then suddenly I'm a magnet for COVID or uh, spooks or outside entities or anything else. It's all yours. It's all yours. So you breathe it, you live it. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Linda, Avisa, if you're, you're welcome to come back if you want. No, I'm going to be me. Uh, so, yeah, next on the on the agenda for today, we're kind of in a funny in between right now. That in between is we have quite a few Shamba true embodied masters on the planet. They've allowed it. They've recognized it and realized it. And out of all those that are truly realized, do you know how many had that big cathartic? Uh, Oh, lightning bolt type of realization. Uh, how many did you guess, Linda? Out of the, uh, we're, we're close to 1600 right now. Uh, embodied Chambra Masters. How many had that wake up in the morning, you're just a changed person, or, you know, get hit by a lightning bolt, or, you know, just the kind of a cosmic consciousness uh, experience? Where it was big and wild? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably none. Yeah, that's correct. None. None. You don't need it. You don't need to overwhelm yourself like that. That only occurs when you hold back for too damn long. But it occurs because you're kind of like a dam on that river that I was talking about. And you're holding back for one reason or the other. You don't believe in yourself. You, I don't know. Maybe you just want to play the game longer. And you dam it up. And you hold it back. And then you titillate yourself by talking about realization and you 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 talk about it it's all mental but you actually don't do it and then one day that dam bursts and then you have a damn realization uh you you suddenly it just comes to you but it's overwhelming oftentimes and it's not particularly the i would say the best way to do it but some like fireworks and some like a nice nice um good glass of wine so we have a lot of chambra that uh have allowed their realization, zero have done it with a great big, you know, um, dramatic, uh, melodramatic uh, type of scenario. It just eases into them, that realization. They just realize they're realized. Then we have a lot of others, what I would call uh, the, the Sooners. Sooners. Uh, and I, I don't mean that Calder is telling me there's a football team and 
Oklahoma called that. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the Sooners. These are the ones who are right on the edge, the Sooners, soon to be realized. And they're kind of in a holding pattern. You know, it's like, you know what it's like with airplanes up in the sky waiting to land, and they're in this holding pattern, and, you know, wondering when they're going to be given permission to land. Well, you're in a holding pattern wondering when you're going to give yourself permission. You're waiting for an outside trigger. Well, there's none. That's all up to you. So I say this because we're kind of in this in-between. We've got uh, quite a few now of realized Chamber masters. And their lives didn't take on any great big changes in a way. Actually, in a way, nothing changed. Uh, but then everything changed. And I know that seems like kind of a contradiction, but you'll understand. Nothing really changed. They still get up in the morning, they still have a cup of coffee, then they got to run to the toilet, and uh, nothing really changed, but then everything changed. A and there's beauty in that. You know, in other words, it's not like suddenly you have to go from uh, living in your house in the suburbs, and then suddenly you, you have to go live in a, um, in a commune somewhere. And it's not like that. But we've got a whole group of Sooners. Uh, sooner or later, uh, it's going to happen. It's really up to you. So I'm trying to now tailor our talks to both the realized ones and the Sooners. It's a little bit difficult because when I sit down to prepare, and my preparation consists of basically tuning into each and every one who will ever, ever listen to this. And that's my preparation. And I feel into it, and uh, where, I, where I have to address the energy, uh, where, where the target is. I don't work on words, uh, and actually so much of that is up to Calder. I work on the, the energy focus of this. And then I have uh, not only the main target area, but the other areas. Where do I put the focus on this? And it's a little bit difficult these days because we got the, uh, the, the realized beings and the soon to beers, or sooners. Uh, so, where do we put the focus? So, here's what we're, we're doing now. So, I'm taking the lead. I'm dealing with the, with the ones who have finally admitted to themselves and allowed to themselves that they're realized. I'm taking the lead edge. And yes, many of them are key hawkers. A lot of what we talk about here in the Shouds comes from key hawk. The key hawkers know this, and I think most of them actually love and appreciate it. We uh, test is not quite the right word, but we eh, experiment's not the right word. We roll it out first in key hawk. We see the we being me and the others who assist me. We see how, how Shumber react to it. Uh, we see the change in consciousness that takes place. So we kind of we roll it out in Kihak. We go into more depth than we certainly do in the Shouds, but we roll it out in Kihak and, and then bring it to Shambra. I'm taking the lead, and most of that includes Kihakers. I'm, I'm pulling from the front, uh, which is a good position to be in. At the back, uh, and the back is not a bad place, but at the back, uh, kind of pushing, keeping things moving along, is your dear friend Kathumi. Kathumi. <laughs> Kathumi always gets the backside of the elephant, uh, I think. Uh, in this case, it's the backside of Shambra, but he's always having to clean up the messes, if you know what I mean. He doesn't mind the position. Uh, he finds uh, joy and delight in it. And um, it says, hey, somebody's got to do it. It might as well be me. Now, kind of running uh, in the middle ground of all this, uh, we've got Chamber who crossed over, particularly the likes of FM. We got Sart. And they're running up and down the lines of Chambra saying, come on, come on, you can do it. The, look at me, I did it. Uh, so we've got that encouragement coming from Chambra. But my focus, my kind of target landing zone for the messages is really more who are just allowing, letting it be, letting it happen. More, more who are allowing. So if you feel sometimes the messages, you know, it may not feel it's focused on just one area that's probably right, because I have to also take in consideration all of the others. But basically what we're here for, particularly in this Shout series, 
is what is it like to be a master on the planet? What, what do you have to endure? What are you going through? Nobody's ever done it before in, in a group like this. Very few in modern times, with a group or not, very few have ever done it. So we're taking a look at, for, for the ones who come later, we're taking a look at, so what is it like to allow your realization to stay on the planet it's not going to be every day is going to be happy go lucky there's there's challenges because you're still in mass consciousness there there are going to be challenges but when we are able to discuss them and you realize that it's not just you there are others and it's not anything that you necessarily want to try to do in other words you're not trying to fix mass consciousness just to make yourself a little happier but you'll learn that you can be in mass consciousness and very aware of it without having it overwhelm you, without taking the joy out of your day. So let's take a good deep breath with that. For the Sooners, the ones soon to be realized, for the ones who've already allowed it. So uh, next on the parade of issues we're talking about today is uh, COVID. Mm. You know, it's interesting. I'm going to give the overview situation. And I say it with all the compassion in the world and in the universe. Uh, but COVID was meant to be. Uh, the humans, there was enough human consciousness on the planet to cause humans to want change on the planet. Change can come about in many, many, many different ways. And I'm not saying that COVID was the best way for it, but change can come about in things like a virus coming across the planet. We've got Bell over here um, responding to uh, the energies of all this. <laughs> That's right. You can show a picture of Linda creeping out <laughs> almost along the floor to go see Bell, and uh, she's having a big dream right now. So, COVID. It really started up at the very beginning of the year, arguably even uh, about one year ago this time, and swept across the planet. It's taken a lot of lives, a lot of lives. It's gotten a lot of people sick, but more than anything, what it's done is changed consciousness on the planet. As difficult as COVID has been, particularly with all the deaths and all the fear surrounding it, I want you to be able to breathe it in. Yeah, and I know that's tough because you say, oh, but all the people died. But it wasn't for naught. It wasn't for naught. It was for a change to come on a planet, and these were people that really were, were ready to depart anyway. And I'm, I'm not trying to minimize it or trivialize it because a lot of humans, what, a million and a half dead as a result of COVID. You can argue the numbers all day long, and it doesn't really matter one way or the other but approximately one and a half million dead as a direct or indirect result of COVID. But I'm going to challenge you now, Masters. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Because a lot of change came about to the planet as a result of it. Is there a better way to do it? Eventually, yes. Where it's not a virus or a disease or a war, eventually, yes. But Actually, I don't know if consciousness on this planet could have done it a different way. Actually, I will go so far as to say it was brilliant. The way it came about and the changes that it has caused and it will cause in the future. With an honoring to those who have died as a result of it. But, you know, I want you to feel into this for a moment. As you're breathing in this whole dynamic of COVID on the planet with compassion, those million and a half who crossed over. Whereas in the past, most of them would have gotten stuck in the near-Earth realms. 80-85% oh, would have got stuck in the near-Earth realms for sure. Now, with all the changes that have occurred in, in all of cosmos, now about, uh, I have to get my numbers right, but uh, almost 70% now, have gone on to the new earths, have gone through the near earth realms upon their death from COVID 
and gone to the near the new earths and there are hundreds of new earths now they've gone there for because of the attraction of higher consciousness of a different way of doing things of no longer going back into the same old patterns now literally the near earth realms generally where people go when they die and they just linger until they're sucked back in for another lifetime now even the near earth realms are are changing and uh if you want to know more about this the the uh, dreamwalker death we, we go into great detail about uh, the near earth realms and the various levels you go through but for so long that was like a putrid mass consciousness cloud where people went when they died didn't really release the, the junk they're carrying with them got sucked back down to the planet ended up with the same damn family in the same little town that they were in before and with the same patterns of frustration but that is changing from covid and the work you've done the closing of the angelic families the closing of the order of the ark now more and more humans will be going by way of new earth where there is much more of a rejuvenation there's much more consciousness before they come back for another lifetime when you just go to the near earth realms and you hang out in uh, what would be your comfort zone uh, or your anger zone or your uh, lack of self-worth zone before another lifetime you don't really change consciousness on the planet it doesn't do much because you 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 as you leave then as you is the same as you come back the dynamics generally that you leave with on the planet are the same that you come back with that has changed as a result of everything that's happened this year so now when they go to the one of the many new earths where you helped to set up you helped to teach in the past you're not doing it so much anymore and you got other things to do they're truly looking at the dynamics of their lifetimes and there is tremendous wisdom in the new earth now where they're now taking a look before i'm going to hop that train back for another lifetime with the, the ancestral family maybe it's time for something different so when they do come back some of them actually already have when they do come back they're coming back with more consciousness and less baggage not totally clean and free as as you know you'd like to think but a lot less baggage and a lot more consciousness they have allowed themselves to bring in the wisdom that is now really uh, proliferating across the cosmos breathe in covid all those who left as a result of it and the ones who are becoming back in and i know you say well i don't want to breathe in a disease damn it breathe it in it's not a disease it's just energy energy that was out of balance until it comes back in to a wise being like yourself other benefits of covid world change on a on a mass scale and I know many of you are thinking, well, I'm, I'm not reading about it. What, what do you mean a big change? Well, they're not writing about it yet because right now it's still in development and much of it's just not um, as much of a kind of a drama attractant as COVID. And I've talked about it with some of our other gatherings, but medical research. The world rallied together. The world's medical uh, community, community rallied together during this time. They said we've got to find an answer driven by economics. They said, you know, we've we've people are out of work. There are people are uh, unemployed, losing their homes, starving. We got to find. We got to keep the economic engine running, which is going to end up to be a joke uh, later on. But that was the impetus for it, as well as saving lives. I don't mean to be totally cynical about it, but as well as saving lives and relieving people of pain. But it was a medical focus that the world has never ever seen before in terms of time money uh, passion in finding the the answer to this covid supposedly they have vaccines that are coming out in the in the very near future and well between now and our next shout actually but that's not going to be what stops covid that's not the newspapers may say that uh, colors tell me you don't have newspapers anymore what a shame uh, the media 
um, the media may not report it that way, but it, it'll come out sooner or later that something weird happened. It just kind of stopped. I want you to remember that weird is consciousness. I mean, the weird they're talking about. It was a consciousness factor that made the difference. And really, the, the, the uh, virus had nothing to feed on anymore. Uh, and it, 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 you can say it's the vaccine, but it's going to be very different. Medical research has looked deep into RNA, DNA, and just about everything else in the human genome, the human body, the human tissues, the organs, and everything else, trying to find the answer to this COVID. It was like the great, uh, great mystery hunt for the medical community. And what they found wasn't just about this flu. What they found was things that are totally uh, new about understanding about, about DNA, for instance. Uh, it it, it kind of leapfrogged DNA research about 10 to 12 years uh, in just a single year because of all the research. Things that are going to help the planet, help humans as we go into the new human species. Going to help overcome uh, and, and understand a lot of diseases. Uh, there's a tremendous impact uh, on the planet, uh, on the financial system. That's why I say it was funny because so much of the research going into COVID was about, uh, you know, alleviating the financial impact of it. But eventually it's going to change the way that uh, things are financed, how money is exchanged, how money is saved, how the whole energy system of money is going to change. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that suddenly currency is going to go out of fashion, and I'm not saying that suddenly this whole um, hmm, conspiracy thing that I get dragged into with Nasara, which is, which is just um, it's a distraction. I'm not saying those things are going to happen, but I'm going to say people are going to reevaluate jobs and money and how they transfer money between each other. I'm not saying the banks are corrupt or anything. It's, 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 it's a moot point. It has nothing to do with it. I'm going to pause here for a moment and divert and talk about conspiracies. Fortunately, most of you didn't get caught into the conspiracies, but some of you did. Generally, conspiracies are highly counterproductive. They cloud your vision to the real point of what's going on. You get deep down into them, but they are rabbit holes. They are dead ends. They are people uh, put their, uh, their fear and their egos and create these conspiracy things that uh, even, even well-intended and logical people get caught up in and make no sense at all. There's a lot of conspiracy stuff going around right now. I want you to go beyond that. Rise above it. Look at the energies of what are taking place, not the conspiracies, not the day-to-day -day stuff you see on the news. It has nothing to do with that. Even, even the news, I would say, is kind of a conspiracy because it's not really looking at the big picture. And the big picture is desire for change, COVID comes, Change occurs. Some people, yes, leave. But even in their leaving, they go off to the new earths and they come back as much more conscious beings, which flows right back into more consciousness on the planet and more change occurring. So let's stop looking at COVID as bad. And I know some of you are just bleeding your hearts uh, saying, oh, but all these poor people. No, stop that. As a master, you look at the total energy message, the total energy dynamic. The planet wanted to change. The planet's moving into uh, this uh, whole time of machines. The planet's going into singularity uh, probably in the next 30 years or less. Things have to change. What I really saw change, though, from my perspective, uh, my lofty perspective, but I don't get entangled in a lot of the human conspiracies and BS and facts and all the rest of that. And I say facts because it's true. Facts are not really facts. From my perspective, what's happening on the planet right now is a tremendous surge of consciousness. It's pretty simple. You have an event like COVID come along, everybody's got to stay home. 
when they stay home for a long period of time, they do this thing that most humans really, really fear. They self-assess. They have to take a look at themselves. They no longer can just distract by going to the office every day, having to deal with other people. They no longer have the distractions of uh, you know, the regular mass consciousness. Mass consciousness went through a huge change this year because of ungrouping. Remember we talked about ungrouping a long time ago. I think it was about a year ago. Of ungrouping, no longer being able to hang out with your ancestral group, which is probably a good thing. No longer hanging out with the groups at the office, your friends, or any of that. Suddenly you're on your own. And what so many people do at that point is they say, Who am I? Who am I? You know, it was that calling back to the house, their house, letting go of a lot of the distractions. Who am I? A lot of people ran from that when they heard that come up in their own mind. They ran from it. They, they didn't want to have to face that. But so many actually took that silent moment in their life and said, Yes, who am I? And with that, kind of a desire to discover something within, something beyond what the mind could tell them or what their logic would tell them. Who am I? What is, why am I here? Why was I going to that job every day? Why was I in a relationship I really wasn't happy with? Why, why did I do this? Why did, who am I? You know exactly what it's like. You've done that. And that's really what uh, was the result of either caused your awakening or was, came shortly after your awakening. Now we have a whole planet doing it. Not, not everybody, but enough. That consciousness changes on the planet. You'll see COVID ease up here very soon, very, very soon. Uh, it almost disappear off the face of the planet, like in a very short period of time. And then you'll see more and more consciousness emerge. That consciousness is going to be young and raw, even if the people <laughs> that are becoming more conscious as are older, but it's going to be what I would call kind of uh, uh, immature or uh, raw consciousness. And it's going to be looking for standards, not, not what I would call leaders who tell everybody what to do and organize groups. That, that's going to be a thing of the past. But they're looking for examples. And they're going to want stories, stories galore, not lectures. Don't, don't lecture them. They're going to want stories of others who have gone into consciousness or come to consciousness. And they're going to want your stories. That's why I've been encouraging you for a long time. Be a little more theatrical. I could take any of your stories. And let's, say, uh, let's say you've had a dreary life. And I could take any story and turn it into something special. I could take the dreariest life of how you were born in the dirt, poor parents, mother died when you were really young, uh, never had any real, never went out to a good meal, never had a good roll in bed with sex with somebody else or even yourself never drove fast to, in a beautiful sports car, never traveled, you know, real dreary life. I can take that, turn it into a story, and make it very special. And if, you, if I can, you can too, no matter how dreary your life has been, or frustrating, or dead ends, or misguided directions, or any of the, the rest of that. You can turn it into a good story, and a little bit of um, embellishing is allowed. Look at every author who's ever written, everyone who takes on a, a pen name. It's, you got to embellish a little bit. Otherwise, it's just a dreary story. But when you embellish, you realize you're not making it up. It was part of what really happened. It was a potential that never stuck in your memory, but it really happened. So uh, embellishing is not lying. L lying is when you deliberately intentionally choose to lie. When you start looking at your story from an embellishment perspective, 
It gets kind of fun. That poor, dreary person who uh, never had a fine meal, but you know, we've got them in the story looking in the window of an expensive restaurant on a cold winter night, just staring in there. And people, you know, it's, it's, it looks warm inside, and the people are feasting on great uh, uh, pheasants and good wine and cheese and chocolate, and there's a fire in the fireplace, and uh, people coming by to serve them. You know, you, you turn it into a Charles Dickens type of thing, but with a good ending. Your good ending. And then it happens. It happens. Breathe in COVID. Yeah. Kind of bold and daring, huh? Everybody's running from it. Everybody's praying over it. They're praying that it'll, that'll end. Everybody's, uh, oh, there are so many tricksters you know, in, involved in this and trying to get money out of it or trying to get fame out of it or just af- deathly afraid of it. have been holed up in their homes for, what, uh, nine months now, not going anywhere, doing anything. They're scared uh, of their own shadow. We're going to breathe it in. I heard the other day somebody's opening some damn portal uh, so we can uh, release uh, COVID off the planet through some cosmic portal. <laughs> We're going to breathe it in. It's just energy. And it came at the right time to serve a purpose, and yes, a lot left. But look at the good that comes from this when they go on to the new earths and they come back in the next lifetime, no longer locked in the old patterns of ancestral karma, but coming back now with consciousness. And then the planet changes. It truly changes. A lot of good has come from it. And the Master looks at the good, uh, acknowledges the, the difficult part, has compassion for the difficulties, but looks from that angel's peak perspective and says, look how this served the planet. And then the Master says, look how I chose to be here right now. I chose not to get COVID. Didn't need to. You know, Chambra has a remarkably, remarkably, remarkably low COVID rate. Uh, and I have to correct that a little bit, Caldra. Some of, some of you are carrying it, but you don't experience the symptoms, and oddly enough, you're not passing it on to others. Shumbra has a remarkably low rate of COVID because you didn't need to get it. There's other ways to really feel into the energies. You chose to be here as a master on the planet, not to pick up COVID, you know, out of some weird empathy for humanity that you're going to suffer too. We're, we're done with suffering. Done, done, done with suffering. If you want more suffering, I'm going to make you suffer for wanting to suffer. <laughs> it's just, it's, we're beyond that. The master comes here, doesn't have to get COVID to understand the good that has come to the planet as a result of that. Yeah, publish that in your papers. Put it all over Facebook. Oh, look what Adama St. Germain is saying. Everybody should have COVID and die. Whatever. What I'm saying is the Master understands the dynamics of the energy. Doesn't get all locked into thought and brain stuff and prayer. Somebody had a global meditation the other day about a co- for COVID. What do you think you did? You just reinforced COVID, you know, globally. You all sat around and had this worry meditation. Uh, nothing drives me crazier than worried meditation. Oh, we got to get rid of COVID. No, we're going to breathe it in. We're going to bring it back to letting it serve us in a natural energy state. I can't wait to see the headlines on this. Ooh. Ah, uh, so uh, now let's get to the point. Uh, that was just my warm up act, dear Linda. Uh, let's get to the point. I'm going to need the drawing board for this, uh, if you wouldn't mind. I'd like to do a little writing here. And uh, I have to say, I do like the old school uh, drawing board, the, the one with paper and uh, with a, a marker and a writer. I know sometimes you have the high tech fancy. Oh, you're going to write. Hey, come over here a little bit. Don't be afraid of the camera. It doesn't bite. No, come over around there. Come over here. Stand, stand right there. Good, good. And I'm going to take your chair here so okay. I can be real nice and close. Uh, take a deep breath. Oh. Take a good deep breath. How oh, doesn't that feel good? Now breathe in COVID. 
I'm, I'm serious as hell. Watch. Ah, COVID. Yeah, COVID. It's just energy. It's just energy. And you don't need to contract it to really breathe it in, knowing how it's serving the planet right now. Feel better? How, how's your temperature? Ooh, no, you don't, you don't have anything. Good. All right. I want to make a little chart here. Uh, if you don't mind, Linda, it'll be two columns. Okay. And um, top of the page, just write and. A N D or A E N D? A N D. A N D. And. And column one is going to be, um, let's call it linear uh, over here. Write linear. Okay. Like, write linear. I'm, I'm a little feisty today. Okay. I am feisty today because. There's so much going on. We've got all these uh, realized Schomburg. We've got the Sooners. We've got all the dynamics of the planet. We've got so much going on. We're in the core of our passion. I am anyway. Core of our passion. Okay. And it's time to wake up, right. Schomburg. This is it. We're here. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'm awake. Good. Good. Um, over here, uh, right? Circular. 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 Okay. We're going to talk now about. Uh, about thinking. Thinking. Humans think far too much, and, and they don't know anything else. They, they think about thinking. Uh, but there's another way to do it. That's the and of what we're doing here. There's another way to do it. You can still think. You'll need to think, because you got to think to drive a car, don't you? Uh, you don't have to think hard. Hopefully you're not reading the instruction manual while you're driving, but you have to think about speed limit, other cars, lines in the road, uh, engine noises, all the rest of that. So you think. That's part of it. And it's, uh, thinking is a wonderful part of the human nature. But if you're only thinking about it and not experiencing it, you're missing what, two-thirds of the fun. In other words, you should be able to get in the car and have the human part think about what it needs to do to drive. And that's all fine. It's very linear. But then you should be enjoying the experience of being on the road, particularly uh, if there's not a lot of traffic. It's one of those open, kind of nicely curvy roads with a beautiful uh, kind of a landscape around it. That's what you're going for. That's what all the thinking is for in order for you to then have the experience of going fast in, in a car on an open road on a beautiful day driving uh, you know, along the seashore. That's what it's all about. That's what you're here for. You're not here for the thinking. My gosh, that would be a waste of a lifetime. You whole, spent your whole lifetime just thinking. No, life, uh, thinking is a service to help you then into your experience. But you know, most people just think, and they never experience what it's like to drive, to be in the car, to uh, the convertible with the top down and the music uh, playing away and then just enjoying. That's the experience. Most people just think and forget to experience. But masters, they do it different. So right under here, the first thing is logic. In the linear world of the human, there's logic. You, th you think about how to start the car, how to drive the car, how to keep your uh, focal point. You think about the other traffic. You think about the gas, all the rest of that. That's all great. Logic is wonderful, particularly when it comes to driving a car or um, <laughs> uh, hooking up dynamite. It's really a good thing to be able to think. But then there's the experience. So what do we put over here on this side? What's the, what's the master counterpart to logic? What's the master counterpart? Linda, any, any fantasy? Oh. Fantasy. Cool. Now, fantasy, the word has its origins in imagine, the word imagination. But also, uh, if you really dig deep into the um, uh, word history, it also has its origins in just meaning to go through, to open and allow. Fantasy. Now, fantasy, a lot of you say, oh, I love fantasy. Yeah, the movies. But what about in your life? Hmm. 
What about in your life? You say, well, I can't do that. I've got to be logical. No, actually, the master is in fantasy. Fantasy is not unreal. And, and again, back to the origins of the word fantasy, it actually originally meant reality. In some of the ancient languages, fantasy actually meant reality. Many are adverse to fantasies because you say, well, others are going to laugh at me, or it's not real, I'm making it up. How often do I have to say, you can't make it up? It's part of you that just hasn't come into expression. So the Master allows fantasy. Fantasy doesn't just mean uh, daydreaming into other realities and potentials. Fantasy can occur while you're here in human form. Fantasy. Fantasy is when uh, things like elves and um, the, the nature divas, uh, the wisps, are no longer just something that you read about in fantasy books, but they're real, and they are real. But when you're only logical, you're not going to see them or feel them. They're real. There's a world of fantasy all around you, and as the Master, you give yourself permission to be fantastic. Yeah, I, I like that. The Master is fantastic. They are in fantasy, and it's okay. You don't hold back. You don't give yourself just five minutes a day of fantasy. You are in fantasy. Then you attract that energy. Then you re really, truly live in fantasy, as well as your logic. Never really been done before, not by any groups and by very few individuals, to be able to combine the attributes of linear living and circular uh, master living. Let's take a deep breath with that and go on to the next one over here. Under linear, we got time. Ooh. Time. I've been talking about it a lot in uh, Kihak, maybe ad nauseum too much, but it's so important. Time is the glue that holds all this in place, good or bad. Time brings about gravity, uh, and, and I'll call it time space, actually, just uh, you know, write it underneath. It's really the same kind of thing. Time. Time is wonderful. Time tells you uh, when you have to be to work, uh, when you have to pay a bill. It, it does a lot of good. It helps you drive that car of logic down the road, metaphorically speaking. But time binds everything together. What would be the opposite of time? Keyhawkers, you know the answer. We've talked about that recently. And just to let you, some of you non keyhawkers in on it, I challenged keyhawkers to come up with a word for no time, timeless, but it couldn't contain the root of the word time in it. Like, timeless is not an appropriate word because you're still binding in time to try to describe no time. What word could we come up with? that didn't contain the element of time, but meant the natural state of all things in, I guess you'd call it the now moment. So we went through a lot of words. A lot of them had elements of time or had uh, the, the uh, Latin uh, name for time in it. Uh, that didn't count because I wanted something that didn't contain this word in it. We came up with something. It was kind of a, a collective. We came up with Aeterna. A E T E R N A. Or if you prefer, you can spell it and pronounce it Aetherna. A T A E T H E R N A. E either one. Aeterna, Aetherna. Either way. And what that means is without the need for time. And it's, this is the natural way of all that is. It doesn't have the element of time. Your universe is time-based. Uh, everything, it, it's everything is time-based. Your planet incredibly time-based. Everything from the time you're born till the moment you die is all about time. The master lives outside of time. By living outside of time, you're no longer have even limited to what you would call past and future lives. Uh, you don't. You you don't. The Master understands also that they don't travel back in time because there is no time. 
The master doesn't travel forward into the future because there is no future. It's all right here. I don't even want to call it now. It just is. At now moment, you tend to put a time measurement on it and say it's right, right now. No. It, it, it just is. It's isness. It's everness. It's everness. And you can be in that and in time. Initially, it's very disorienting. So what's happening right now with Shambra is we're going through it in dream state. You're having very weird dreams right now because you're experiencing, you're testing, going timeless in your dreams. You're seeing how it affects your body, your thoughts, your relationships with others. Uh, there's a lot of dreaming being done right now by Shambra, and it's mostly right now about going into Eterna. And you say, yes, but I, I'm having dreams of uh, you know, like past lives or things that happened earlier in this life. Yes, because now you're putting them in Eterna. You're taking them out of a linear time frame. You're putting them in Eterna. Let's take a deep breath with Eterna. You need no time, except when you want it. Take a good deep breath. Good. Let's put uh, next on our, our list, let's put um, memories. Memories. And while we're at it underneath that, put facts. Facts. Now, memories and facts, uh, neither one of them are fully complete. You have a lot of memories that are in time, they're on a timeline, but that are really quite incomplete. And then you claim it to be a fact, which is actually really not. It's a, maybe a partial fact, but it is not total fact. It is not total truth. So the human operates on these, and you could actually even write in uh, fear underneath that, because memories have oftentimes have fear components in it. So you kind of put all that together, memory, facts, and fears, and it dictates the logic. Logic isn't logical at all. You think it's logical, and you try to make it logical, but every decision a person makes in their life is based on emotions, or something higher, consciousness now, but based on emotions. You say it's logical and that it contains facts because of the memories that you have and you're putting it all in time-space, including your fears, but the fact is you're calling it logic and it's emotions. Everything. Uh, mathematics. Uh, uh, we could argue about this, which I'd be happy to do because I'm really good at it, <laughs> but mathematics are ultimately emotional decisions. So is deciding what you're going to eat today. So is deciding uh, if you're going to have a headache or you're going to get COVID. It's all emotional, and you pretend that it's logic. So with the logic you, in time and space, you put it into little containers and boxes, little uh, squares, little lines, and nothing more. When the true Master lives in circular, open. And what you really have in here the Master, uh, instead of a lot of memories and a lot of facts, the master, the master is simply going for experience. So that covers all of that area, experience. The Master doesn't get trapped in the time, doesn't get trapped in the fears or the facts or even the memories, because the Master realizes it was just all an experience. That's all it was. And the Master loves experience because then the experience, no matter what it is, is ultimately brought to wisdom. So the Master lives with the beauty of their timeless experience in the fantasy of their choosing, and it's all very, very real. It's not a mind gone crazy. The mind gone crazy is the one that lives in logic and pretends that it's smart and logical, when in fact everything is based on emotions from old memories. Hmm. But then they think they're logical. And to me, it's sad. It's dreary. They're not. They're just driving the car logically. They're not experiencing it. They're going well. Yeah, but I got in an accident once. Big deal. Big deal. 
The master lives for the experience and understands at a certain point that they can choose the experience, how they want to experience driving that car, and they don't let the fact that they got in an accident once and all that fear and what they call a fact from their memory ever take away from that experience and that sensuality. And there's one more on the list here to top it off. Judgment. You typical human living their logical life, confined in time and space, holding on to memories which are not really true, and they're calling them facts when indeed they're just emotions and fear, then gets very judgmental. And the judgments now close them down. The judgments cause them not to breathe in deep because they believe that, uh, that things are right and things are wrong, things are good and things are bad, that they did good, that they did bad. There's all these judgments. They take all that and now put it into judgment, put it into even more little containers, more isolation. They judge it. They limit it. They suffocate it because of their judgment. What does the Master do? I'll just call it Asius. Asius. Uh, Linda said uh, quietly on the side, uh, distill. It's all distill, but you know, the Master doesn't have to judge. He's gone beyond uh, having to judge, doesn't even like to judge anymore because instead of saying coronavirus is bad, and look at the evil that's brought to the planet, the Master simply looks and says, Look at that energy. It's as is. It is what it is. Look at all that's come from it. Look at the experiences that people have had even when they die from it. It's as is. No judgment needed. Not, not even to judge a good or, or, or bad, but we don't have to put any judgment on it. None whatsoever. Try that in your life. No judgment, just as is. Then you start seeing the whole picture. The entire picture, not just an old memory or what you call facts in time and space and justified by logic. Now you're in that car. You've got this part of you working for you, the logic, the, the memories and everything else. And now you can be wide open in that joy of driving down the road. And then you discover the car is you, the road is you, the experience is you. It's all about you. And then you're living as a true master, not trapped over here. You've got the and, which very few other humans and no other groups have ever had before. I am linear, I am circular. I am logical, but I am in fantasy. You've got all that going for you. So that's today's contribution to the Merlin's Handbook for Embodied Realization. On one of the chapters, it's the and. It's the real living. You go beyond the mind. You go into your senses. You can't figure your way out of this. And that's what Linda Farrell, who passed away a week ago, she spent so much time fighting it and figuring it, and you can't. You breathe it in. You embody all of it. No judgment. You're just in the as is. It is what it is. And you're in fantasy, which is just expanded reality. You're, you're in eterna, which is you don't need time. You've got all this. This is the way the Master lives. And you don't have to work at this. You don't have to remember a thing I said. It's happening anyway. That's why you're feeling a little odd. That's why you're having weird dreams, feeling that you can't make up your damn mind about anything. Well, that's good, because then you don't go to judgment and old memories, and you're just as is a being, a wise being in experience. Let's take a deep breath. Let's have a marab with all this. You don't have to remember a damn thing. We're going to bring it together in the beauty of the marab. Take a good deep breath. We're going to start up the music now. And for the next 10 minutes, I'm not going to say a word. But believe it or not, 10 minutes without a word. Because, you know, 
languages, they're, they're over here on this side, the linear side, languages limit and restrict the true energy. We're going to work with you on reading or perceiving energy, the awareness of energy. We don't need words to lock it in. Words have their own, uh, well, words uh, occur in time and space, and words have certain memories and judgments about them. So for the next 10 minutes, no words at all. As a matter of fact, the screen is going to go blank here, just black, representing our timelessness. The music will play, but see in 10.
breath together. Ah, 10 minutes of silence. Hmm. Or was it? 10 minutes of allowing this integration of the, of the Master's life, the circular life, the fantasy, which is really fantastic. It's very real. Don't, don't ever, ever scoff at fantasy, because it's very, very real. It's all what you want to believe. And then Eterna being timeless. That ten minutes was about timelessness. And you know, there was a lot of going on going on, but you got to start to feel <coughs> timelessness. Timelessness is not empty. It's just not incremented like regular time. It's actually quite wonderful. And and again, it's not about going back and forth in time, because that's still time. That's what uh, many of you have thought uh, about being timeless, going back and forth in time. No, no, no. It's timeless. It's, it's eterna. It's ever. And then living in your experience, experiencing, you know, without all the fear and the facts and the memories and, and judgments, just as is, living as is. Let's take a big deep breath with all that, openly, freely, without holding back. Because now that's where you go. You go from uh, really a linear life, and then into the and of circular. You can do both. We certainly do both. Not not alternate one or the other, but you're both. That is truly amazing, and that's why we're here. That's why we're talking to the masters and the sooners on the planet. With that, my dear friends. Um, Always a delight to be here with you. Special thanks to Linda Farrell for offering her her wisdom and, and uh, her honesty about all of her fights. And special thanks to dear Linda of Isa for being my audience today. Let's take a deep breath together in the beauty of this time of machines. A deep breath together, remembering always that all is well in all of creation. Thank you. So with that, I can say from my own personal experience that please stay with the good deep breath. That breath, that deep full breath. And then let it be and then release it. Thank you for being a part of this last shout of 2020, December. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for this team, Michelle and Moisha, for here in, Colo for here in Hawaii, as well as our Colorado team. Thank you so much, and please take care of you, and really let Adamus's messages, just really let them soak in so much information. But again, best wishes and happy holidays to all of you, no matter what it is you're celebrating in this season of celebration, best wishes always. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you.